Hi everyone and welcome back to our course on Google Calendar. In this lesson, we're going to take our first look at creating events. To begin, start in the web-based version of Google Calendar. You may be in day, week, month, or year view. I am in week view so that you can see the events that I'm going to create on the calendar. There are three ways to begin an event. You can either click Create in the top left corner and then select Event. This will open a small pop-up event window in the center of your screen. The other option to begin an event is to simply click anywhere on the calendar or drag and drop to select a time frame, and then that same small event window will pop open. Now my favorite is the keyboard shortcut, the letter C. This takes you to the full screen event creation as opposed to that smaller pop-up window. Looking at the smaller pop-up event creation window, the first step is to select what you're adding to your calendar. So notice that you have options such as event, task, and appointment schedule on a personal Google account. If you have an education or business account, you may see additional options here such as focus time, out of office, and working location. Creating a regular event, select the date and adjust the time frame. Click does not repeat to set a repeating event. Your options are daily, weekly, monthly, annually, or you can customize what days of the week this may repeat. When you are in the customization window, you can also select if this repeating event ends on a certain date or after a certain number of occurrences. This is great if you're adding your daily lunch breaks to your calendar or any sort of repeating meetings. Also located here is find a time, which we will revisit later. Next, we can add our guests, which may be individuals or groups. So for example, when working under a domain with a business or school account, you may have groups or departments such as marketing at xyzcompany.com, or maybe it's HR at xyzcompany.com. If you type in the group as a guest, all members of that group will be added to the event which is much more efficient than adding each person individually, especially for those large groups of people. When you add additional guests other than yourself, Google Calendar is going to automatically add a Google Meet video conferencing link to the event. You can remove it, keep it, or you can switch it to another tool such as Zoom if you have that add-on added to your Google Calendar. Don't forget to add a location if needed, especially for those in-person meetings. Speaking of which, if you have an education or business account, you may see the option that says room. This allows you to search for and reserve rooms for this particular meeting. This is a great way, again, to save time on communication with the rest of your organization. Think of all the emails, chats, and phone calls that can be saved. Now, let's look at an overlooked yet very powerful feature of Google Calendar events, the description. Give meeting attendees the purpose or the reason or the why for the meeting. One great way to do this is with a list of meeting objectives. Objectives should be measurable and begin with an action verb. This not only makes the purpose of the meeting clear, it also gives you goals to accomplish at that meeting. Because the objectives are measurable, you and attendees will be able to determine if the meeting objectives were met or not. If they were not met, you and others have a starting point for future meetings or possible action items for after the meeting. To write these objectives, you can start out with something like, by the end of this meeting, we will be able to, and then use the bullet points or numbers to list out two to five objectives. Great measurable action verbs are create or compare, discuss, identify, maybe complete, analyze, or plan. Another thing to add in the description is a list of items that you need attendees to either accomplish or think about before coming to the meeting. This is what I like to call lesson zero or action zero. You are getting everyone on the same playing field before beginning the meeting. Again, it's all about saving time and creating a productive and efficient environment for everyone. 
If you have an education or business account, you will see an additional button here to create meeting notes, which will automatically create a Google Doc for the meeting and automatically attach it here to the event so that both you and guests will never lose it. Another pro tip, create this meeting notes document right now before sending out the event to everyone. You can always go in and add those pre-meeting notes later as the date approaches or the day of and ask everyone to look at the meeting document to access links and follow along during the meeting. If you happen to have additional calendars at the very bottom is where you can adjust which calendar this event is on. There is also an option to set the event as free or busy. The default is set to busy. We'll talk about appointment schedules and find a time coming up, so it's important to adjust the default busy to free for events where you are actually available. So for example, you may put an event on the calendar that says you're in the office from 8 to 12, but you're available to meet, so make sure that that event says free. Also switch the default visibility to private for things such as your doctor appointments that you've added to your calendar. Last, set your notifications and make sure to click save. That probably seems like both a lot and a little all at the same time. There's actually a whole lot more in here for us to do, which makes Google Calendar so powerful. Meet me over in the next lesson where we talk about creating events a little bit more. See you there. Hi everyone and welcome back to our course on Google Calendar. In this lesson, we're going to continue looking at how to create events. Let's start where we left off. When you click a calendar event, a window with event details appears. For existing events, you have options in the top right corner such as the pencil for editing the event and the trash can to delete the event, a mail icon to email the event details and then three dots with options to print, duplicate, publish the event, or change the owner of the event. One little hidden feature of calendar events, you can right click and select a color. If you completed the Gmail course, you'll remember from our discussion of labels, the importance of color. Our brain will recognize color and images faster than it will recognize text. So use that to train your brain with your calendar just as you do with color on labels and filters in your Gmail. First, select the three dots on your main calendar and select a main color. All events will default to this color. A little pro tip here, don't pick a bright red, orange, or yellow because your brain already associates these as being important or warning. Now, right click on an event and you can select a color to change it from that default. For example, you may have lunch blocks on your calendar, so maybe we should make those gray. For an important meeting, maybe mark it red. And for an important project, maybe mark it yellow. The key is to reserve the brighter colors for items that are urgent or important or special, and everything else on your calendar should be light or monotone. Utilizing this correctly will allow your brain to catch and notice these special events, improving your organization and productivity. We looked at the small pop-up event. Now let's look at the full screen event window. So let's create an event and click more options, or remember that keyboard shortcut, the letter C. Now that we're here, along the top and down the left, you will see all of the same settings that were in this smaller pop-up window that we looked at before. The difference here is you have guests on the right as well as guest permissions. By default, your guests can invite others and see who else is on the guest list, so come here to adjust as needed. You can also toggle guests as required versus optional attendance with a little person icon that appears beside of their name. Now let's use find a time. First, add some guests. Over on the left, you can now select find a time. This shows both your calendar and your guests calendar. This ties back to those calendar settings we talked about, so make sure your domain can see free busy if you have a business or education account, 
or at a minimum, give individuals or groups permission to see your calendar. Again, you can select just free busy or all event details. So think about the emails, the chats, the phone calls that we could all save with this. Along the top of find a time, you can switch from day view to week view. You can also change all guests versus required guests only. If you have an education or business account, you will notice that you also have an option to view the availability of a specific room that you have selected. Again, the time we can save with this. Make any additional event settings and then make sure to save your event. In most cases, it is best to send emails to the guests when you save. Back to creating on Google Calendar, remember you can toggle between calendar and tasks in the top right corner. Along the left, you can add additional task lists other than the default list, which is called my list. Toggle back to the calendar and click on the calendar to create an event and select task. Give the task a short title and use the description for a larger body of information or to add a link. These tasks can be tied to a specific date as an all day task. Tasks can be tied to a specific time similar to events or from the task window, as opposed to the calendar window, you can add tasks that do not have a date or time. Tasks are essentially like a to-do list, but synced with your calendar. You can select marked complete when a task is done. This will put a slash through the task as well as dim the color on the task. Similar to changing the color of your main calendar, you can change the default display color of your tasks. Click the three dots and select color. For those of you with an education and business account, you have the option to create focus time. This allows you to set specific time range when you would like to not be disturbed. If your team is utilizing Google Chat, this will mute your chat notifications so that you can keep working without interruptions. You can also automatically decline any meeting invites if needed. You can also set if your focus time is in a specific room or location and add an additional description or attachments if needed. And down at the bottom, you can change the visibility or which calendar this is actually going to go on. Also for our business and education users, you can set an out of office event with the option to automatically decline any meeting events. You can change your visibility of this event. One really important feature is to customize your message. So for example, if you are on vacation, maybe you're on medical leave, whatever it may be, you can use this space to be specific. So how long will you be away? Or when will you return? Are you checking emails when you're away or not until you return? Who is maybe the point of contact while you're away? As with everything else we've talked about with Google, it's important to utilize features such as out of office to communicate across to Google Chat and to Gmail. It's about saving time and communicating efficiently with others through these tools. The last option for our business and education users is working location. This is where you can set specific campuses or buildings or locations that you tend to be in. This may include if you are working from home. Again, this helps others understand your availability in person or virtually. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To see the full course that this video came from, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.